Okay, good afternoon, all of you. So I'm back. Last day due to some health issues, so I couldn't take your class. Your Sanjit sir took it, right? Then Mahi students, then Yasmin is there. So Yasmin from which JNV? Mahi students, how is the climate in Mahi? Hot, right? In Karnataka, I mean Udupi. It's pretty hot here. What about Mahi? Then Yasmin. Okay, Yasmin from Janvi Roy. Okay. Northeast, right? Ah, okay. Shillong region. Great, great, great. Yeah, it's almost three o'clock. So we can start it. Okay, Mahi students and the Yasmin. Then, uh, without wasting any time, we can start the class. Okay, good afternoon. Okay, something. Okay, Jeremy, my students. Sugamano. Okay, done, done, done. So still we are studying about this organic chemistry. Then after the after ending the chapter, you will have a chapter test. You have to prepare for that. So IUPAC nomenclature we have studied, reaction intermediates we have studied, isomerism we have studied. Then electronic displacement effect we have studied the major portion. Only some portions are left. We will study about uh, that portion also today. So you two friends, you have to give me some good afternoon or uh, hi message in the live chat. Okay. Then only I can understand you are present there, you are attending the class. And uh, if possible, you can uh, type the name of the JNV also. You two friends, okay. In Zoom, I know Mahi students are present. Yes, Minister from Shillong region. So the you two friends, I can't directly see the JNV, which JNV you are from. What's the name of the student, okay. So without wasting any time, I hope uh, technically everything is fine. Uh, audio, then video, screen, everything is perfect, right. So we can start it. So JNV, okay, JNV P, so class 11. So JNV P means, uh, which JNV? I don't know. I think from Andhra or Telangana. Na? Okay, we are studying about hyperconjugation. So what about the hyperconjugation? So hyperconjugation that is shown by AFC. Okay, AFC means alkenes, free radicals, carbocation. Then what are the condition? There should be an SP2 hybridized carbon atom. It should be attached in sp3 carbon that sp3 carbon should contain a carbon hydrogen bond then what will happen this carbon hydrogen bond electrons will be given to our sp2 hybridized carbon atom so what is happening here i have a carbocation present so c plus charge is present if charge is present it is always tension suppose you have so much money you are giving to someone okay then tension so what is that tension so when will he return the money that is tension suppose you are taking money from someone so you will get some charge right negative charge electrons then also charge is present then also tension okay i should return the money okay if charge is present then always tension you can't enjoy your life that is issue if you are rich if you are poor so both condition it is quite difficult so carbon plus that is carbocation positive charge then this is our sp2 we know how to find the hybridization of carbocation then after that we have sp3 carbon that sp3 carbon contains carbon hydrogen bond then what is happening so this hydrogen it is giving electron to our sp2 hybridized carbon atom so it is formed like this then what about our hydrogen h plus then one hydrogen is present one is present here okay now stability increases why actually positive charge is present on carbon atom there are three hydrogen alpha hydrogen so they are good people they are good friends so they are saying, okay, carbon, I will handle the tension for some time. You can enjoy. So today you can enjoy. So if you have more number of good friends, then it's okay. It's good for you. Your stability will also increase. So how many alpha hydrogen is present here? Can you tell me how many alpha hydrogen? So this is our sp3 carbon. That is our alpha carbon. The number of hydrogen attached to this alpha carbon that is known as alpha hydrogen. So how many alpha hydrogen? three alpha hydrogen so three good friends are present so that means 
So it will decrease the tension on our uh, carbon with positive charge. Suppose first hydrogen is giving, first hydrogen is giving electron to that bond. Then what about the second hydrogen? It can also give, right? So I can also write like this, carbon, hydrogen, then double bond C, hydrogen, hydrogen. Then, then this hydrogen is giving electron, so it becomes H plus. So tension is on that hydrogen. Then third hydrogen, then the reason is present here, carbon, hydrogen bond. Or I can also write like this, C, double bond, C, H, then H. So I'm taking third hydrogen. So this is our third hydrogen. It can give the electrons, it will become H plus. Then this hydrogen is present here. This one is present here. So there are three good friends. It is taking the tension from the carbon. So the stability of this carbocation increases if hyperconjugation is present. Then you will take, so H plus is present here, right? There is no bond between carbon and hydrogen. So it can go far away, right? No. So I can say this carbon-carbon, there is a pi bond. Pi bond means lateral overlap, right? Then that there is a weak interaction between this H plus and our pi bond. So H plus can't go away from that. Okay. So I have written so many structures. So like your resonance, how can I write a single structure? So I have carbon, carbon. So one bond that is permanent. Then what about the double bond? It will come. Sometimes there will be double bond. Sometimes there is no double bond. So I can say partial bond is present. Then what about hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen? This carbon, hydrogen, alpha, a hydrogen. So sometimes bond is present. Sometimes there is no bond. So dotted lines, partial single bond. Then this carbon, okay, normal carbon, hydrogen bond. So that is a, that's like a resonance structure. So I can say partial double bond is formed. So stability increases. So here carbon, hydrogen. Can you tell me the bond order of this carbon, hydrogen bond? So this carbon hydrogen bond, what is the bond order of sometimes one, sometimes there is no bond. So it can be zero, it can be one. So we can say bond order, bond order of this carbon hydrogen bond, it varies between zero to one. So that is a bond order. So this is hyperconjugation. So hydrogen is giving electron alpha hydrogen. So how to check how many hyperconjugative structures are present? We have to count the number of good friends then we can say about the stability. So if there are more number of good friends, that is more number of alpha hydrogen, more number of hyperconjugated structures, more is the stability of alkenes, free radical carbocation. Okay, that is a point, tension and good friends. Okay, so hyperconjugation. So what is happening in hyperconjugation? We have already explained that here we have a carbon plus charge, hybridization sp2. Then this carbon, sp3. We have studied about sp3 hybridization. Okay. So sp3, sp2. So here we have an alpha hydrogen. So that alpha hydrogen carbon hydrogen bond, that electrons is gone to our sp2 hybridized carbon atom. Then a double bond is formed between carbon and carbon. Okay. Then H plus is staying there. So it is taking the tension. So there is no bond between carbon and this H plus. Still it is there. Why there is a weak interaction between this H plus and this pi bond. Okay. So this is known as sigma bond orbital. So carbon hydrogen sigma bond overlaps with P orbital. There is pi bond, right? Then sp3 P overlapping. So sp3 hybridized. We have studied that uh, overlaps with P that is pi bond. Then if there are more number of alpha hydrogen, more number of hyperconjugative structures, more is a stability. So we can say if there is hyperconjugation is present, it will increase the stability of carbocation. Stability that is related to charge. Charge decreases, stability increases. That is the point. Hyperconjugation. Okay. Some more structure for you. Carbon, carbon. There is a pi bond form that is lateral overlapping, right? It is not head on overlapping, pi bond. Then sp3 hybridization. It is present. There is weak interaction between the H plus and our uh, pi bond. So that H plus will stay there. There are three hydrogen atoms in this example. So that is our hyperconjugation. There are different names for hyperconjugation. One is sigma bond resonance. So carbon, hydrogen, sigma bond, right? Then another name that is no bond resonance. Why no bond resonance? So carbon, hydrogen, there is no bond. Still resonance is happening happening. So we can call it as no bond resonance also. Then one more name for that, baker nadan effect. So baker nadan scientists, they are the scientists. So we can say it is also known as baker nadan effect. 
So, which are the three different names for hyperconjugation? Sigma bond resonance, no bond resonance, Baker Nadan effect. So, only this much. So, you can leave all these things. How to apply this hyperconjugation concept to solve a question? So, let us check that one. Okay. So, applications of hyperconjugation. First one is stability of carbocation. So, we have explained the stability of carbocation based on inductive effect. So this is almost somewhat similar. Okay. The stability order that is similar. So let us check it. Stability that is proportional to electron deficiency. So carbocation. Carbocation means the C plus. So positive charge is present. So to attain more stability, the charge should be decreased. How to decrease the charge? Okay. So you have to remember only this point. Stability of carbocation that is proportional to number of hyperconjugated structures. In last case, there were three hyperconjugated structures because of three alpha hydrogen. So how to check the number of hyperconjugated structures? You can count the number of alpha hydrogen. If there are more number of alpha hydrogen, then more number of hyperconjugated structures, then they will take the charge. Then can you tell me how many hyperconjugated structures are formed? Or how many? So leave number of hyperconjugated structures, leave that. Maybe it will confuse that. So you have to only tell me how many alpha hydrogen is present in these examples. So here we have an sp2 hybridized carbon atom. There is no sp3 carbon. There is no alpha carbon. So there is no alpha hydrogen. So what about this one? This is an sp2 hybridized carbon atom, carbocation. This is our sp3 hybridized carbon atom. That is alpha carbon. So how many hydrogen is attached to this alpha carbon? Can you tell me? Yasmin, Mahi students, JNV, Pune, Naikib, Yasmin, Alima. So can you tell me the answer? How many alpha hydrogen are present here? Yeah, Alima, correct. So number of alpha hydrogen, that is three. Okay, there are three good friends. So it will increase the stability. It will take the tension from this carbocation. Then what about this one? This is sp2. Then you can tell me the answer in the chat box. SP3. Yeah, Lima. Then who will tell the answer for this one? SP3. There are two SP3 carbon. There are two alpha hydrogen. So this is also alpha. This is also alpha. So now can you tell me how many alpha hydrogen atoms are present in this example? So how many? So is that uh, seven or six? So this is SP2. SP2. So we have to check SP3 carbon. So this is second sp3 carbon. In this, there are three alpha hydrogen. Here also three alpha hydrogen. So total number, that is six. Okay, then what about this one? This is an sp2 hybridized carbon atom, sp3 alpha carbon, sp3 alpha carbon. So this one, sp3 alpha carbon. So can you tell me, Alima, Jnv, Mahi, Jnv, Pune, how many alpha hydrogen atoms are present in this example? Yeah, that is correct. So there are nine alpha hydrogen percent. So there are nine good friends. So what about the stability order? One, two, three, four. Which one is more stable? First one, second one, third one, or fourth one. So which one is more stable? How to check the stability? Stability that is proportional to number of alpha hydrogen. If more number of Yalima correct. So the last one, fourth one, that is more stable. Why? First one, zero alpha hydrogen. Second one, three. Third one, six. Fourth one, there are nine alpha hydrogen. So we can write the stability order like this. So we have already explained the stability of carbocation, tertiary carbocation, that is more stable based on inductive effect. CST group, it will give the electrons. That means plus psi effect. So plus psi, it is giving electron, electron negative charge. So here positive charge is present. So electron is going, so positive charge will be decreased, stability will be increased. So that is based on inductive effect. This is based on hyperconjugation. So how can you explain the stability of carbocation? One based on inductive effect. Second one based on hyperconjugation. Suppose if there is hyperconjugation inductive, which one is more dominant? That is stability due to hyperconjugation is more stable than inductive. So hyperconjugation is more dominant than our inductive. Okay, so this is the first application. Is it clear to you? First application of hyperconjugation. I hope this is clear to you. Then next one, you have to tell me the answer. Stability of alkenes. I will give you some examples. You have to tell me the stability of alkenes. 
So again, same point we are repeating the stability of alkene that is proportional to number of hyperconjugate structures. How to find the number of hyperconjugate structures? You can count the number of alpha hydrogen atom. So tell me, in first example, in first example, how many alpha hydrogen is present? So this is sp2. This is also sp2. Then this is our sp3. So sp3 carbon, alpha carbon. Then how many hydrogen atoms are present? Here there will be one hydrogen. Here there will be one hydrogen. So can you tell me how many hydrogen, alpha hydrogen atoms are present in the first example? Anyone? JNV Mahi, JNV Pune, then Yasmina, BBMGT. I don't know from which JNV. Okay, JNV Rajkot. Rajkot, that is famous. So can you tell me how many alpha hydrogen is present in the first case? So I have already explained that, right? So we will have two alpha hydrogen two alpha hydrogen present in the first alkene. What about the second one? This is sp2. This is also sp2. So here we have an sp3 carbon. What about the number of hydrogen atom, alpha hydrogen atoms? One, two, three. Then this is also an sp3, right? So here there will be one more hydrogen. Then only the tetravalency of carbon is completed. Now can you tell me the second structure, how many alpha hydrogen atoms are present? So you have to just count it and tell me the answer. Very simple. So you have to be active in the chat box. Then what about the YouTube friends? I can see eight persons, more than eight here. So there are three alpha hydrogen. There are three alpha hydrogen. So what about the third one? So this is sp2. This is sp2. Then here we have sp3. So can you tell me the answer? sp3 carbon. So how many alpha hydrogen? How many alpha hydrogen present here? So anyone, how many alpha hydrogen is present in the third example? So there are two sp3 carbon, sp3 carbon, alpha carbon, alpha carbon. So alpha hydrogen, alpha hydrogen. So how many alpha hydrogen? So answer is nine. So can you tell me one, two, three, which one is more stable based on hyperconjugation? Anyone? So first case, two alpha hydrogen. Second case, sorry, here not nine, here it is six, okay. So here it is not three, it is four, it is four, it is four, sorry for that. So three plus one, four. Here three plus three, six. So third one is more stable due to hyperconjugation. So third one, it has six alpha hydrogen. Then next one, it has four alpha hydrogen. Then first one, it has two alpha hydrogen. So alima, that is correct. So third one is a more stable. So stability of alkenes, we can explain it using our hyperconjugation. You have to check only the number of alpha hydrogen. So you should identify sp3 carbon atom. Okay, is that clear to you? The second application, the stability of alkenes. I hope it is clear to you. If it is clear to you, you can do a previous year question. Okay. So what is the correct answer? So here I said the stability of carbocation, AFC, alkenes, free radical, carbocation can be explained using, okay, Esmin, SP2 and SP3 in the last class we have explained. So hybridization, how to find that hybridization? That is a number of sigma bond, number of sigma bond uh, plus number of lone pair, number of lone pair. Okay. So we will go to the last example here. So take this example. So I'm writing it here. So there is a double bond present here. Then hydrogen, hydrogen. Then here also one hydrogen. So we have to find the hybridation of this one. How to find that? The number of sigma bond. So how many sigma bond? One. Uh, two, three. So three sigma bonds are present here. So pi bond, no need to consider pi bond. So this is sp2. This is sp2. So okay. Then sp3, you can check sp3 also. Last, last class. So last class on uh, Friday. So free radical, carbocation, carbon. So we have explained the uh, hybridization, then structure, shape, etc. So go and check that one. So here the trick is number of sigma bond plus number of lone pair. If double bond is present, so normally double bond present, that will be sp2. Then a single bond, that will be sp3. Then triple bond, that will be sp. Okay. So based on this formula, you can check that number of sigma bond plus number of lone pair. So, so this is our free radical. So this is our carbon. So you have to check the hybridization of that carbon. So how to check that number of sigma bond plus number of lone pair. There are no lone pair for uh, this carbon. How many sigma bond? One, two, three, four. 
So four is hybridization. Four means that is sp3. So this point you have studied in chemical bonding chapter. So if it is hybridization that is equal to three means it is sp2. Hybridization using the formula, if you get two the answer, then that is sp hybridization. Okay, so go and check the chemical bonding chapter. You can use this formula. So number of sigma bond plus number of lone pair. Okay, there are no lone pair, only sigma bond is present. So you no need to consider the pi bond also. So based on chemical bonding chapter. I hope for Esmin it is somewhat clear. Okay, so you have to check the chemical bonding chapter or our last class. So reaction intermediates, carbocation, carbanion, free radical, how to find the hybridization. Is that okay, Esmin? Yes, Esmin. Yes, hybridization, how to check that. So here we have free radical. Then what about, this is sp3 hybridized carbon atom. So can you tell me, in this sp3 hybridized carbon atom, is there any alpha hydrogen present in the first example? So this is the first, first case, first one, first one. Okay, there are no alpha hydrogen. So what about hyperconjugation? No hyperconjugation. Okay, here also you can check this one also. Here it is double bond, not sp3, it is sp2. Suppose, if it is, Suppose you are uh, saying that sp3. So is there any alpha hydrogen? One, two, three, four. So tetravalency, that is done. So there are no alpha hydrogen. So there is no hyperconjugation in one. So one only. So we can delete this one. So we can delete this one also. Then we have to check the option two. Okay. So phenyl group is present. Again, then ring is present. Double bond is present. So here also, similar to this one. There are no alpha hydrogen. There are no alpha hydrogen. So there is no hyperconjugation in second example. What about the third one? So this is sp2. We know how to find the hybridization. That is sp2. Then close to this one, there is sp3. How to find sp3? One, two, three. There is one hydrogen also. So number of sigma bond, that is four. So it is sp3. So alpha hydrogen, there is one alpha hydrogen present in that side. So what about this side? So here, this is also sp3. So one, two, three. So one alpha hydrogen is present here. So again, one more alpha hydrogen. So is hyperconjugation present in the third case? Yes or no? In the third case, whether hyperconjugation is present or not. So in the third case, first case, no alpha hydrogen. Yeah, of course. So in one and two, there is no hyperconjugation. Why? There is no alpha hydrogen. In the third case, there is alpha hydrogen. So we have counted the number of alpha hydrogen. So which is the correct option here? So 2015. Need question. So question is not cancelled. Okay. That exam was cancelled due to some issues. So which is the correct option here? So this need question. So the correct option. So which one has hyperconjugation? So the correct option is our option A. So that is a, a correct one. You two friends, you can give me the correct answer in the uh, live chat. Okay. You have to give me the answer. Then only I can understand whether you got the concept or not. So hyperconjugation, number of alpha hydrogen then stability increases. We have explained the stability of different species. Is that clear everyone? Hyperconjugation, the concept of hyperconjugation. I need answers from JNV Rajput, Nike, Esmin, JNV Pune, Alima, JNV Mahi. Is that okay for you? This hyperconjugation, alpha hydrogen. So if good friends are present, then tension decreases, charge decreases, stability increases. So that is a point here. So I hope this is uh, clear to you. Okay, the chat box it should be active, hyperactive. I want that. I want that kind of attitude from you. So next electronic displacement effect, that is our resonance. So this resonance, we have already studied resonance. In which chapter? Again, chemical bonding. So don't think that these chapters, this chemistry chapter has no connection at all. This organic, inorganic, they have some connection. So other chapters, you know, they also have some connection. So while studying this chapter, you can revise some topics from chemical bonding. So it will be good. If you're not revising, then no use. For teachers also, we will also forget the things. So we also have to revise. So it is very important for human beings. You have to revise the things. Otherwise, you have studied that two months back. Now you don't remember anything. So while studying this chapter, resonance, that is a related concept. You can go to chemical bonding uh, chapter. Then some notes will be prepared by you. So you can go through that, revise that. So what is this resonance? So which is the best example for resonance? So there is one molecule. So if I say resonance, you will say that. So which is that resonance? Resonance that is related to which molecule? So which is the first molecule that comes to your mind if I say resonance? So what is that? So which is that molecule? Can you tell me? 
resonance means that anyone do you remember that word so resonance resonance means chemical bonding you have studied somewhat so resonance that means delocalization of pi electron so sigma electrons no entry for sigma electrons only entry for pi electron so what is happening what is happening here suppose delocalization what is this delocalization so before studying delocalization we should understand what is a localization so a and b is present two atoms in between some atoms are present sorry some electron electron pair is present so this electron pair is always present between these two atoms so localize delocalize means suppose a is present b is present c is present so first i am seeing this electron in between a and b after some time i am seeing this electron in between c and b so there is delocalization there is no fixed position for this electron pair it is shared between more than two atoms that is known as delocalization so localization it is uh, present in between two atoms delocalization it is shared by different atoms more than two atoms so delocalization of pi electron that is taking place so what is the importance of resonance why we are using this resonance so we have studied again our chemical bonding chapter right lewis dot structures suppose i can show a molecule okay using lewis dot structure if i can explain all the properties of that molecule using a single structure then it's fine no need of resonance suppose i am not able to explain all the properties of that molecule using a single structure then i can say this molecule has more than one structure okay so we need resonance we can say resonance is happening there is some change happening for the first structure so lewis structure if we can show using a single lewis structure no issue we don't want resonance but in the case of benzene we can show like that so we will study about benzene so each possible lewis structure so what we have to do we have to write the lewis structure so that is known as our resonance structures we will study about that so planar structure so suppose we have benzene so if i ask you to draw the structure of benzene some people will draw like this then some other people will like they will draw like a different manner so we will study about that so carbon carbon sigma bond is formed then there is some pi bonds formed so c1 this is c1 c1 and c6 so some pi overlapping some overlapping is taking place lateral overlapping then sigma bond is formed between c1 and c6 then this side another pi bond is formed here one more pi bond here also one more pi bond so three pi bonds are present here so i can say this is a structure of benzene then yasmina is coming and she is saying that suppose this c1 and c2 they are overlapping lateral overlapping then pi bond will be present in a different position pi bond will be present between c1 and c2 then sir is this structure correct or wrong first structure okay first structure is correct you can also draw like this one why here the pi bond is between c1 and c2 so in this case it is between c1 and uh, c6 so different overlapping is there. so different structures are possible so using a single lewis structure we cannot represent our benzene then what about this benzene what about the bond order or bond length we can say all this carbon carbon bond length they are equivalent they are almost same but what about our our structure here there is a double bond here there is a single bond so bond order of double bond and single bond it is different bond length of double bond and single bond that is different so using a single structure we cannot explain all the properties of benzene so we can say benzene is showing some resonance so in terms of resonance we have to say using resonance we can explain the different properties of our a benzene okay so resonance why we need resonance because using a single lewis structure we cannot represent that we cannot explain all the properties of that molecule using a single structure so that is why we need our resonance is that clear why what is the importance of resonance so what is delocalized electron what is localized electron is that clear to you alima then mahi students and rajkot students uh, bb mgt then pune vardha yasmin is that okay for you okay fine so that is the importance of resonance there are different kind of resonance 
we have studied this conjugation alternate double and single bonds are present so here here check it here there is pi bond there is sigma bond there is pi bond so first example for resonance if there is pi sigma pi then there is a chance for resonance so what is happening so this electron pi electrons there is delocalization of pi electron so pi electron is not staying at a single point so it is a traveling from one point to another okay pi electron so suppose this bond this bond is getting broken this pi electron is moving to this carbon so that carbon is getting electron if it is getting electron positive charge or negative charge so if i accept some electron i will get negative charge then if this carbon this carbon is losing electron so positive charge will be represent then this carbon electrons are coming so negative so a new bond is formed between these two then what about this one again a new bond is formed so here the position of double bond that is different in two resonance structures here three double bonds here what is present pi bond pi bond negative charge so this is a first example for you if there is pi sigma pi conjugation then there is a chance for resonance this pi electrons will move from one point to another there is shift okay so that is a first example for you then one more example so this is pi sigma pi example pi sigma pi so here what you can see there is pi bond there is sigma bond there is positive charge so second example for you there is pi sigma positive charge then there is chance for this resonance so what is happened here this pi electrons delocalization initially it is present between atoms a and b so now this pi electron is moving away from that so a new bond is formed between a b and c so pi electron that is delocalized what about this a it is losing the electrons if it is loses electron then what is the charge developed positive charge will be developed on this carbon atom so positive charge so that is a second example first example pi sigma pi second pi sigma positive charge there is chance for a resonance so what about the third example so third example so can you tell me the third example there is pi sigma negative charge so third one pi sigma negative charge then chance for resonance so what is happening here this negative electrons it is coming to this side then carbon it is tetravalent so this double bond should move away from this one right so it is going away so positive charge will be formed on this carbon this carbon it will get negative charge then positive and negative so a bond is formed there so i can write like this negative charge then we have a sigma we have a pi so that is another type of resonance okay so first one second one third one so there are different conditions for this resonance okay the next one so what is present here there is a pi bond there is sigma there is lone pair then there is a chance for delocalization so delocalization will takes place then it will have different structures so we cannot explain all the properties of this molecule using the single structure so we have to do different lewis structures okay so that is resonating structures so what will happen here so lone pair of electrons are present so our lone pair of electron will jump to this carbon then this pi electron should shift so if it is coming to this carbon negative charge so this pi electron it is moving away from this carbon it will get positive then so what is the structure so negative on this carbon then new pi bond is formed then nitrogen is giving its lone pair if it is giving then positive charge so negative a sigma pi bond okay so that is formed here so negative charge is there then sigma is here pi is here then positive charge on our nitrogen that is another example so i can name it as a pi a sigma lone pair if pi sigma lone pair is close together then there is a chance for delocalization of this electrons is it over no it is not over actually this concept we have studied in chemical bonding chapter okay so one more examples so can you tell me what is the conjugation or resonance happening here what is this dot i have written a dot here what is that can you tell me what is that dot what does that indicate the dot anyone so what is the dot we have studied homolytic cleavage we have studied heterolytic cleavage so what is that dot 
that means it is a radical so next example is there is pi bond there is sigma bond there is radical or i can say free radical there is free radical then also there is a chance for delocalization so what is happening here so this free radical is jumping to this position then uh, we have studied this cleavage of bond so this type of cleavage is known as homo or hetero there is fish hook arrow fish hook arrow is used for which type of cleavage homolytic cleavage or heterolytic cleavage so can you tell me the answer so this type of cleavage is known as yeah jnv nasik okay great 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 so homo is formed then radical will be formed so how radical form so one one radical one electron is present here then one will be present here then electron electron new bond will be formed between them so what is a new structure form so a pi bond is created here then sigma bond form here new radical new radical is formed so these two are in resonance okay so first one pi sigma pi then positive charge is present pi and sigma then pi sigma negative charge then after that pi sigma lone pair then after that pi sigma free radical so lot of information right so you have to feed all these things into the brain so you see is it possible to directly feed that no it is not possible you have to write the structures this arrow you have to indicate fish hook arrow you have to understand so you have to practice this in your hostel okay so that is the basic concept about resonance actually all these topics in our school we have learned this in chemical bonding chapter itself that is why i have increased a pace so these are the different possibilities for resonance is it clear to you this one uh, jen v nasik jen v rajkot then alima he said okay for you it is somewhat tough if you are hearing it for the first time if you have studied the chemical bonding chapter it will be easy so this is a perfect time to revise the chemical bonding only take a single page then read the points so no need to revise a complete chemical bonding chapter within a single day it's not possible we know that so important points resonance take it revise it okay so that is the basic things about a resonance then again we have studied this points in a chemical bonding chapter there are certain rules to draw the resonating structures we have studied lewis dot structures how to draw that same 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 we will study about the same thing so what is the first rule so what is the first rule for that so all the resonating structures must be lewis structures you know how to write the lewis structure then what about the movement of electron suppose i am a rich person then only i will donate electron to someone right i will give money to someone similarly electrons move from higher electron density region to lower electron density region it's a very common daily life situation right so electron moves from higher electron density pi electrons are present it will move to another location lone pair is present it can move to another location so electron density region high to lower electron density region that is a movement of electrons next one next one very important so so many students will uh, make some mistake on this one only electrons are moving atoms there is no change in the position of atoms atoms are staying still okay it is staying still only electrons are moving from higher electron density region to lower electron density region so i will give an example so can you tell me whether the, these two structures are resonant structures or not yes or no i need only yes or no whether it is resonant structures or not so this is based on the third point only electron move there is no change for the position of atoms yeah jn vinasi great so here there is double bond o so double bond o okay fine there is no hydrogen so here can you see oh group present here oh there is movement for the atoms so in resonance there is no movement for the atoms only our electrons are moving from one place to another so they are not resonating structure okay that is a very important point we have to check all the options in the paper whether position of atoms are same or different okay so electrons are moving so we have done this example so here what is happening here pi electrons pi bond is getting converted so bond to bond so that is bond pair to bond pair that is pi electrons sigma electrons so here a new bond is formed an old bond is broken that's the point then what is happening here so bond to atom 
So here, this is our pi bond. It is getting broken. Then electrons are going to this carbon. That is our atom. So bond pair, it is getting converted to lone pair. So bond to atom. First case, bond is getting converted to another bond. Second case, bond, electrons in the bond is getting converted. Or it is going to the atom. So that is a second point. What about this one? Can you tell me? So atom is present. So which is atom present? That is our nitrogen. So nitrogen has some lone pair. That is going to uh, become a bond. So atom, electron present in the atom is going to the bond. So I can say lone pair, it is getting converted into bond pair. First one, bond pair to bond pair. Second one, there is a bond pair that is pi electrons are present. It is going to this carbon. So it becomes lone pair. Then lone pair means it is not participating in hybridization. Okay, that is lone pair. They are simply sitting. They are very lazy guys. Bond pair means they are actively participating in bonding. I can say like that. So here a nitrogen is present. So those electrons are going. Then lone pair is getting converted into a bond. So we can say like that. The number of unpaired electrons or lone pairs in all resonating structures must be same. These are the uh, different points. If one electron is moving from this to this, then one bond will be broken. Those electrons will go to the atom. So lone pair, bond pair, like that. So these are the different rules for uh, drawing resonating structures. Next, we have to understand which resonating structure is more stable. Again, you have studied the same point in chemical bonding. So it will be very easy for you. Relative stabilities of resonating structures. So how can I say one resonating structure, one resonant structure is more stable than other? So first point, there are some points. Okay, I have already studied that. Neutral resonating structure is more stable than charge. Why? If charge is present, stability will be low. So neutral, there is no charge. Then charge species, polar. Polarity, that is charge difference is developed. So non-polar and polar, which one is more stable? So that is our neutral one. Our non-polar one, that is more stable. So in this, can you tell me first one or second one? Which one is more stable? So this is based on charge. Which one is more stable? One or two based on charge. Charge increases. Stability. Yeah, Lima, correct. So first one, there is no charge present. So that is more stable resonance structure. Okay. Then there is shift of electrons. Then resonance structures having complete octet is more stable. So octet, we have studied again chemical bondings. I'm repeating the chapter name, right? So if a molecule or an atom is attaining octet, it will be more stable. It's an old theory. But still, in some concept, we are still using the octet theory. So if octet is completed, that is more stable. If octet is not completed, still the same theory, it is not that much stable. So what about all this carbon, three hydrogen, then one sigma bond here also? All are completing their octet. Then what about this one? Here we have sp2 hybridized carbon atom for positive charges present. So sp2 hybridized, we have studied carbocation free radical, they don't complete their octet. So example, carbocation, they have deficient of electron, they will accept lone pairs, right? If they accept lone pairs, so can I tell them as Lewis acid or Lewis base, carbocation. So carbocation is acting as Lewis acid or Lewis base. They are electron deficient, right? They are not completing octet. So they need some electron. They are taking electron. They are ready to accept the lone pairs. Then we can call this carbocation as, yeah, Lewis acid. So same thing we have studied in carbocation. They have incomplete octet, positive charge. Okay, so that is a second point. So one and two, which one is more stable? First one is more stable. You know how to count the number of electrons around the carbon atom. Right, you have to count the number of bonds, then multiply that. Okay, so first one is more stable. Then very important point. So charge on the atom. Okay, we have two structures. So here, Charge is present on positive. There are two resonating structures. Then on carbon, there is a negative charge. In the second case, on oxygen, there is a negative charge. Oxygen can hold the electron more tightly, more electronegative. Okay. Here, positive charge on nitrogen. Which one is more stable? So if you get two resonating structures, you have to identify which one is more stable. So point is positive charge on less electronegative atom. Okay. That is uh, positive negative charge should be present on more electronegative. So nitrogen and oxygen. So 
Uh, you said first one. So nitrogen and oxygen, which one is more electronegative? Electronegativity of nitrogen and oxygen. Which one is more electronegative? Of course, of course, you can tell me. So oxygen, that is more electronegative in nature. So negative charge should be present on oxygen. We can hold the electron more tightly. So oxygen negative charge. So in this second example, negative charge is present on our oxygen atom. So which one is more stable according to the third point? So this one is more stable according to our point. Positive charge, negative charge. Negative charge, two resonating structures. You can check the negative charge. It should be present on the more electronegative atom. What about positive charge? If positive charge is present on the more electropositive atom, or I can say less electronegative atom, that structure is more stable. The second case, negative charge is present on oxygen. Okay. So second one is more stable. So you have to remember, you have to just remember this point also. So these are the different points about the stability of a resonance structures. So neutral octet, the negative charge on more electronegative atom. Then there are so many points related to this, the same thing. Charge, okay. If opposite charges are present very close to each other, it is more stable. If similar charges, positive and positive are present very close to each other, then stability will uh, decrease, okay. So different charges, unlike charges should be uh, close, then the stability of the resonating structure should be high. Again, a chemical bonding chapter. Then in that chapter itself, we have studied resonance energy. So what is that? We have studied so many points, how to find more stable resonance structure. Okay, in the case of benzene, there are two structures. Then after that, you will write one re resonance hybrid, right? So you can find the energy of resonance hybrid and uh, the energy of the more stable, more stable resonating structure. So the energy difference between these two, that is known as the resonance energy. You have to find the energy of the resonance hybrid. You have to find the energy of more stable resonating structure. Energy difference between these two, that is known as the resonance energy. So if resonating structure is more stable, more energy release. So contribution to RH will be high. So these are the different points related to resonance. So all these points is discussed already in chemical bonding chapter. So there are some more important points which is very useful to solve the problems. So we will study about those points in the uh, next class. So before that, I would like to give you a homework question for you. So this is a homework question for you. So this is based on hyperconjugation. The stability of free radical based on hyperconjugation, you can explain. So this is a homework question, again a previous year question. So what is the point to remember? The number of hyperconjugated structure increases if the number of alpha hydrogen increases. So you have to find sp2 carbon. That is the carbon on which free radical is present. Then sp3, sp3 carbon. Then count the number of alpha hydrogen. That means if there are more number of good friends, then stability increases. So in these examples, we can count the number of alpha hydrogen, then hyperconjugation, then the stability of radical. Is that okay for you? Hyperconjugation and some simple points related to resonance. You have studied those points in chemical bonding chapter. So it's a perfect time to revise a chemical bonding chapter. Okay. So we will end it here. So this is a homework question for you. You have to do the homework question that is based on hyperconjugation. So thank you all of you. We will meet in the uh, next class. Okay, Alima, thank you. Then other students, JNV Rajkot students, JNV Mahi students, JNV Pune, then uh, JNV Vardha, Naikip, and Yasmin is there. So Yasmin, uh, check the last lecture or the chemical bonding chapter. In the chapter, how to find hybridization, it is explained. You can use different, different formulas. Okay, JNV Mahi students, next class will come up. Okay then, bye. Okay, see you in the next class. Okay, I'm ending it here. Okay, then bye.